Hello, this is Paul again, and uh, at the end of my last video about the RE, uh, putting the uh, anamorphic adapter on my RES, I mentioned that I had made a sync motor for my RE. Uh, I really wanted one of these, a Jensen motor, and I couldn't get one. They were too expensive. They would show up and the bidding would go crazy, and uh, it was beyond my my uh you know budget for my hobby stuff so i started to think about getting back to making my own sync motor and uh the, the task itself i believed i knew how to do it using off-the-shelf hardware mostly and then uh, i had to make some parts to to you know put it all together here's a standard re s uh, motor. I think it works on the M also. Um, it has a variable resistor built into it. When you turn this part here, that's what adjusts the speed of the motor running. This is the forward and reverse switch right here under my index finger. And this is the inching knob. The inching knob allows you to rotate the motor until the mirror comes in line with the viewfinder system so you can uh, see through the lens. Um, the RE does not come to a stop with the mirror automatically in the correct place. You have to inch it into the correct place. So here is a bad Jensen motor. I bought this motor off of eBay and I got it with a bunch of other stuff. And long story, it just doesn't work right. Um, sure, it could be fixed by a person with the schematics and the right knowledge. I might even be able to fix it if I had the schematics. But for right now... I went and bought another one, but before all that, I thought about developing my own sync motor because um, I've been messing around with motors for many years. I've uh, put motors on other cameras and uh, I thought I could do it. So basically, I designed this part to be a, a, the dimensions of this part here. This is the part that sticks into the back of the camera and this is the this, this ball right here is what drives the rubber coupling to turn the, uh, the camera mechanism. So I, I made my own version of that. This is just a, um, a, sh a shaft. This is a stop collar. I took it on my lathe and spun it up, attached to the shaft, and took a file and rounded the front edge of it. And then I just stacked up a bunch of uh, spacer washers they're not regular washers they're for like RC car uh, spacer to put on shafts and things like that so I stacked them up I'll later I'll make a piece that goes in there that's the exact right size but to get the size right now I just stacked up a bunch of washers behind there behind that is a um, a sealed bearing and beside behind that is a part I had made by PCB way this is not a sponsored video by PCB way there's lots of them out there but this is uh, a part I designed in Fusion 360 CAD to mimic the dimensions of this part and uh, uh, the boss, I'll call it the boss. The boss goes in the back of the camera and uh, it's, uh, I, ha I had uh, PCB Ways CNC factory make uh, one of these for me and it wasn't super expensive. I believe it was like $80 to have the thing made. It may have been more or less, but per right around that. And then there's a, cap that goes on the top of it that's basically just sealed off on this side with a hole in it for the shaft to go through and that allows me to mount it front mount it and put screws through it so let's turn this thing sideways so you can get a better look at it I'm about to drop these other motors on the ground but hopefully not so here is a uh, nylon uh, basically it's a nylon motor mount and it has screw uh, so basically I put screws through it and I put some bronze inserts in there so that the screws won't pull through the plastic. Okay, so this motor is what's called a spindle motor. It goes on a computer numerically controlled CNC router. It's a very cheap one. This was around 50 bucks, I believe. And so here is a mounting boss for an encoder. So this is an encoder. This has 100 counts per revolution, so every time this shaft rotates once, 
it lets out 100 impulses that can be read by a uh, another device like a, um, a CPU or a microcontroller. In this case, I have a microcontroller in here. And uh, so every time that rotates, it lets out 100 pulses. And inside here, there's a, a Gecko servo drive. I can show you one of those. I'll try to cut a picture one into the video here around this point. Uh, this just let myself to know to do that. Here's the stop and start switch. It runs off of uh, 24 volts because the motor will not be at 12 volts or below this motor. Won't, because of the specifications of the motor, it won't turn with enough torque and enough speed to turn the motor uh, at the correct speed for the uh, camera. So here's the tw 24 volt input. It's a, a barrel jack connector, 5.5 millimeter. And here is a light that goes out when sync is achieved. Internally to this is a microprocessor, and I am not a programmer by any stretch of the Im imagination. So I um, I got on ChatGPT, and ChatGPT will do programming for you, and it will write scripts for uh, different processors. And I, I put a microprocessor in here, and... Uh, uh, I worked with ChatGPT. It took me about a month because it, ChatGPT is not the easiest thing to get to program for you. Um, it works, but you have to explain what you want exactly in terms that it understands. It's almost like programming because you have to use the language. You need to know what things are called, you know, what an encoder is, what the output of the encoder is like, what kind of voltage it's looking for, all these technical things need to be explained to ChatGPT for it to understand what the task is that's going to program for you. It took me almost a month, maybe three weeks. Every night I would go on ChatGPT and it would write me a program and it wouldn't work correctly. I would diagnose the issue along with ChatGPT by uh, telling it what I saw happening and it would try to make a fix. And then sometimes I would have to start over completely over maybe 10 times or more. I had to start over quick because we got so far away from what I needed to do that, um, anyway, there's the bottom line is chat GPT did the programming, but I did the explaining to chat. So it's, it would be like going to a programmer and explaining what you need done. If you're a lay person, uh, to programming, uh, and then they would have to figure out what, how to write the code. And if that didn't work, you know, say you had somebody in another country, you'd be you'd be corresponding kind of back and forth. Well, that's just what like working with ChatGPT. Uh, they don't know what you're doing. You have to explain it to them. They eventually get it, and eventually you get some code back that will work. So this, what this, what the code does is, when I push the power switch, it ramps the um, frequency up of of impulses going to the Gecko drive. Uh, I believe it's a G340. I'll have to go look that up. But it's a servo driver that expects to see switch opening closures on a certain terminal in, on, the, uh, on the little box, okay? So when it sees that, it outputs one step of movement. So imagine this circle is divided by 100. Every impulse will move that, that uh, motor by 1 one hundredth of a revolution. 1 one hundredth, not one hundred times okay so one over 100 so you have to tell it what frequency you want those pulses to come out to drive this thing to turn at the proper speed so it's like 3000 something rpm i don't remember off the top of my head it's been you know six months or more since i did this thing anyway i got it all working and it's it's you know it's no more loud than these motors are and i use i have a uh uh, a cinema type uh, a piece of equipment. I'm trying to think of the name of the company. That's why I said cinema. It's part of their name. But it, what it is, is it's a bunch of LEDs in a circle and it checks the sync of your camera. If you have a mirror shutter, you can look through the lens, point it at the device, and if the motor's turning exactly at the right speed, the frequency of those um, uh, mirror changes, uh, you know, uh, uh, flickering, will we'll slow that circle of LED. Uh, they, they basically uh, rotate in a circle 
And then when it gets to the right frequency, it just stops. And if it's a little tiny bit off, they'll drift slowly in one direction or the other. So if it's running slow, it'll go this way. If it's running fast, it'll go that way. So I have sync pretty well nailed down with this now. Even driving it in the camera, I checked it in the camera, and I believe this has uh, the potential to be a crystal sync motor. Okay, so what happened? I get that done, and a week later, or two weeks later, one of these comes up on eBay for a really good price. And so um, I bought it, and it works perfectly. The new Jensen motor, I have two of these now. This is the bad, one of the good ones in my RES. And uh, so there's the story of my home-built, handmade, to the, for the most part, this part was 3D printed in aluminum. The uh, mount for the encoder 3D printed in aluminum by a company uh, uh, out of China. This is a motor I got off of Amazon for, like I said, 50 bucks. I designed this strap uh, system to hold the motor to the case here. And I designed this, this whole assembly and boss. And anyway, it, it all works, but you know, it's a little clunky. It sits out the side of the camera. It's not any heavier than this one, I don't think. Maybe pretty close. Um, but anyway, I thought this would be interesting. Somebody might get a kick out of it. Now, I'd like to finish this video by saying I do not plan to develop a product from this. I don't, I'm a retired person now. And uh, the thought of starting a new company, making these things, and selling them to people, and then dealing with any returns or issues with the product. It just doesn't interest me at this point. I may in the future, you know, put this all out as a, you know, do-it-yourself project uh, up on the internet somewhere. But for right now, it's just a novelty product that I developed for my own use. And uh, I hope that doesn't make anybody angry, but that's just way, the way it is right now. Um, I have other things. I teach school a couple times a week uh, uh, for a local college. And... Uh, I just don't have time to, to develop this any further. So uh, with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, I have some other, many, many, many other things that I have developed for cameras over the years, uh, for Bolex cameras. Uh, so if you like this video and you want to see some of that, let me know in the comments and then uh, subscribe to my channel so um, you'd be able to find the new videos that I put out. Thanks for watching. Bye.